Hello and welcome to another new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. I hope you enjoyed your little Christmas break. Um, And now we are celebrating a very happy new year. So this is a review of all things 2017 movies and TV. Um, It is very spoiler heavy. So if you haven't seen a lot of new movies or if you're not super up to date, just keep an eye out. If they might mention a movie, you might want to fast forward a couple seconds so you don't get any spoilers for it. Um, Other than that... We would like to wish you a very, very happy new year to 2018. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Tony the Movie Guy and... Miss Money Annie. There you go. You have that down pat now. You know, I think we can get get over the fact that I can now say it. (laughs) I'm just going to keep doing it until you screw it up again sometime. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) You know, Danny wanted to call herself Miss Money Danny on that Star Wars episode. I heard that. I was like, hey. (laughs) All right, cool. So look, this is a very special episode because this is our last episode of the Tony and the Movie Guy podcast for 2017. It's pretty special. This has been quite a ride. I mean, we've done this show for what, just a couple months. Mm. I think this is like our 22nd, 23rd episode. Uh, We've had such a great feedback and reception from all the fans and listeners. We love you guys. Um, And most of all, it's just so much fun to do. That's why we do it. So much fun. We enjoy it and everyone else seems to enjoy it. So that's great. So um, I guess what we'll say is, uh, you know, I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas uh, with their loved ones or if you were alone, I hope, you you know, maybe you listened to this and it put a smile on your face. You did something else that, you know, made you feel happy Um, and uh, happy new year to everyone. Happy new year, guys. Yeah, because I think by the time this podcast will be up on iTunes, it will be 2018. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, I hope everyone uh, sets their goals for the new year and I hope everyone flourishes and prospers for 2018. That's our wish to you all. All right. So let's get the party started here. Um, what we're going to do basically is a episode which will be um, 2017 in review. Um, best of movies and I'm also going to do TV. Which I'm so glad he decided because there was just a couple of things this year that were so epic in terms of TV really releases. Were. So I was like, I hope he decides to do that. Yeah, well, also, you know, I'm quote unquote Tony the movie guy, but obviously I do watch TV. Now, I don't have cable, but I've got all the, you know, the big streaming HBO, yeah. Showtime, Hulu, Amazon, yeah. Netflix, everything. which is like taken over everything. Pretty much. And there's a lot of great TV shows that are really just top-notch quality. So, oh. And a lot of listeners have asked about us reviewing TV shows as well. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to cover um, my own personal choice of the best films of 2017 and then some of the best TV shows. I will say as a disclaimer, I haven't watched everything. Yeah, me too. I, so, I, I, when I looked, I was like, oh, I wish I'd actually seen that, that, and that, and because I'd, I'd love to review it. Right, so there are you some... Know. I would like to see, but, you know, I can't really give my opinion on it because it wouldn't be my own. You know what I mean? So I'm going to only cover the ones I've seen, Yeah. you know, so I realize the list may be a a bit lacking. And we'll just go back and forth. We can discuss them a bit. Some of them we've probably talked about in detail, so we won't go into them in so much detail. Others, maybe we haven't. So now we'll have a chance to kind of go into it a bit more detail. Sound good? Do it. All right. Well, yeah. So we're going to do uh, best of 2017 movies. Start. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, that's the German <laughs> rubbing off. That was incredibly German. You know why? I was thinking of Dunkirk. <laughs> you were like so commanding. Well, that's my number one movie of the year. And I knew that. So I was like, start. <laughs> <laughs> that's very fitting. Okay. Well, I mean, Dunkirk's all about the Brits beating the Germans yeah, but in World War II. They are the evil ones in that movie, well, so they are, there you yeah. go. Um, okay, look. So I saw Dunkirk um, on 70mm in the theatre. Absolutely loved it. Then I saw it IMAX 3D 70mm right. on this brand new IMAX screen in Universal Studios, which blew me away. Yeah. I mean, I, I was just... 
it like shell shocked, like almost speechless. I, the movie really touched me. And then uh, it just came out on iTunes in 4K. Yeah. And again, for all the listeners, if I haven't mentioned this before, not to brag, but I've got like a really bitchin' 70 inch 4K TV that's curved. Oh, so it's so sweet. It looks almost lifelike. The yeah. clarity is incredible. Yeah. So again, that's another reason why I don't go run out to the theater to watch everything in the movies because right. it looks awesome on our screen at, at home. Uh, but Dunkirk was a film that I always had on my radar. I had so much expectation for it. And I will talk about this a bit because I think this came out way before we started the podcast. And now I can actually talk about it because I finally watched it. Right, so you just saw it recently. Yeah, so Tony had actually invited me every time he went to the theater. And for some reason or another, I was not available, which really bummed me out because I really, really wanted to see it. I am, and you know this, I'm not into war films. Right. But something about that film... It's in, a very different kind of war Yeah, movie. and the, the trailer already really got me so I really wanted to and you just raved you were texting me after the movie and everything so that blew me away um I loved it David loved it we uh, and I'm talking on my little screen that's nothing compared to what you have here oh like, so you saw it on iTunes too yeah like I just rented streaming. it on Amazon basically right. um Hey, that's my old TV. That's a nice TV. <laughs> so I'm hoping basically when Tony gets sick of this one, I get his downgrade every time. It may happen, time. man. It may happen. So when he gets the next one, I'll get his curve. Um, do you want my, my, my take? Yeah, on? yeah, yeah. Why don't you start and then I'll go into it a little bit okay. more. So um, first of all, I am a massive Kenneth Branagh fan. Massive, massive, massive. And I know it's interesting in this film because I thought about, okay, who's really the the hero or this or that. And I couldn't put my finger on it because it's about all of them. Yeah. I mean, it's the kid, but yeah. it is an ensemble for sure. And because you're really looking at the experience of of such a massive, you know, army right. and everything else, it, it's kind of hard. It wasn't like one of these films where it's solely centered around one soldier and what he's experiencing. It's from these three different perspectives As yeah, yeah aspects but i loved kenneth Branagh. i loved there was a moment are we doing spoilers i'll go for it it's okay. been out for six months i don't know if you know what i'm talking about but right towards the end there's a moment where he thinks it's all over and he closes and his he eyes closes his yeah. eyes and, and he that, braces himself for I, death. I teared up yeah. and and started like shaking yeah. thinking okay you know it's gonna it's gonna be over but i figured obviously maybe something would happen but i thought it was beautifully done yeah I loved him. Um, every single shot from the air was my favorite. Oh, so well done. Spectacular. So well done. Um, I will say one thing. The only criticism I could have is the kid. I liked him. The main young The main young. Finn, yeah. I think Theon Whitehead is the name. And Christopher Nolan, the director, intentionally cast an unknown actor. And I liked him as yeah. an actor. Don't get me wrong. I thought he was great. But I wish, and this is just me, and you may argue this, I didn't feel emotionally connected to him at all. Like, I didn't feel like I really knew anything to do with him or about him that made me invested in him. That is literally the only criticism I have about the film. Just so you know, that's one of the main complaints anyone that didn't like it um, said was that um, there's two things which I think are very interesting. Number one, that uh, some people who didn't think the film was excellent, most people loved it, um, didn't think it had enough scope. Okay. And uh, the other thing was that you couldn't really get invested in any of the characters. Okay. Um, and I, I do have a defense on those points because uh, Christopher Nolan, who directed the movie, I, I think was actually thinking with that. Um, here's my take on it. Number one, it was a Christopher Nolan movie. Right. He's one of those directors now that he's such a name, just his name attached to a movie. People are, are going to be excited to watch a film that he makes. Right. Um, number two, the film, yes, it's a war movie, but what the film is about is something I, I'm British, duh. Yeah. I think the listeners know that by now. I, I, you know, so I grew up, I, I remember very distinctly in history class being taught about Dunkirk. Absolutely. Because Dunkirk was a very, uh, ground breaking historical and pivotal event and a in, groundbreaking fuck up yeah I mean, well it was, it was <laughs> in world war ii but actually people don't remember it that way as a fuck up you I see know. <laughs> people remember it much more differently because this is before america had joined the allied exactly. forces germany was closing in was yeah. crushing everyone and um britain was just this little country 
standing on its own and it was just totally defiant and it wouldn't give up. And yeah, 400,000 British troops and a bunch of French troops actually were stuck on Dun Dunkirk Beach and yeah. the Germans were literally just picking them off. Yeah. And um, they were sitting ducks on They the really beach. were. Yeah. And what happened was thousands of civilian boats came out yeah. and basically rescued all of the soldiers and what it did was it lis lifted the spirits and that's where so that true. famous speech from winston churchill we shall fight them on the beaches we shall fight them on the yeah, land we shall amazing. never surrender that's where it comes from and it invigorated everyone and it was a major turning point for the war so i have a lot of pride in that uh, in just kind of that british kind of stout like you know right. we will just keep spirits. going yeah, yeah. we will never give up um so that's one aspect now on the points you brought up, it's very interesting. So the film is very different. And and again, we won't spend this long on all the ones we're no. going to talk about or we'll be here all night, but Dunkirk deserves it. But I really it. wanted to mention... Well, it's my favorite movie yeah. of the year. And um, it was my favorite movie of the year when I saw it. And now, six months later, it still is. Which shows After, you yeah. as it can hold up. Well, I watched it three yeah. times. And one thing that really works for this film is it's it's Christopher Nolan's shortest movie. It's like a hundred minutes. Yeah. And the, the the script, I think, is like 50 pages long because there's not much dialogue at all. Not. It's all visual. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say is he intentionally used um, real extras on the beach. He mm -hmm. filmed on the Dunkirk beach in yep. Dunkirk. And he used real planes, real ships, real boats. So he could have easily copped out and used modern day cgi oh no i loved all to, that what i'm saying yeah. is he could have shown vast landscapes to show four hundred thousand soldiers sure. and thousands of boats but he went with practical effects and used real boats which and, i love which i think was incredible love that and he wanted to show the chaos and confusion of war right so that's why a, a lot of those characters you don't even know their names right you know so yeah you don't really get invested in them because I, interesting i think what he was doing Actually, I read it, so I know this is what he was doing, was he was representing three different viewpoints of yeah. the war. Land, which was the mold, and that kid yeah. kind of is the central character of that. But you're right, there's several others. Harry Styles, who I actually think Which is one was Harry Styles, by the way? Just one of the other people oh. on land who's kind of an asshole. Oh, um, that, that was him. Okay, he yeah, actually yeah, yeah. is one of the actors who stood out to me that good. gave one of the best performances. He was actually very good. He's the one who uh, points at the French guy, right? And that's right. Okay, okay. That's I was right. wondering who that I, was. I thought he was really good. Yeah. He got to say a couple of F-bombs. and <laughs> I mean, you know, Harry Styles is from One Direction, which... I do love that band. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know why. I just like that. Tony's biased. It reminds me of Britain. I, I love them, you know. The cheeky it's little like the bastards. It's like the Spice Girls, you know. It's one of those things exactly. you love. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, um, it represents these three storylines, land, sea, and air. Yeah. So land is with that kid, yeah. um, Finn Whitehead. I think Fionn Whitehead is the name of the actor, a totally unknown guy. And yeah, Kenneth Branner is on the land and... Um, C, which is Mark Rylance, yeah. um, and then Air, which is Tom Hardy. Who was amazing. And uh, I don't know if you kn knew this, but so Land is one week, a one-week period. C is one day, and Air is one hour. No, I didn't. Now, I had to watch this two or three times. I think on my third time, I really saw how all the stories come together. Mm. If you watch it again, Yenny, you'll see when the you know, Tom Hardy is flying over, mm. you'll see everything that's happening and is shown on the sea story. Oh. He sees below, but it's at different time frames. That makes sense because sometimes I was a little confused. Right. I was like, wait, is it going backwards? What's yeah. happening? Yeah, okay, so that makes so much sense. It's not just three stories. The land is, everything that's happening wow. on the land story is one week. Wow. Everything that's happening on the sea is one day, and Tom Hardy's story is one hour. Remember, oh his fuel gasket gets blown yeah, out, and he yeah, only has yeah. 14 minutes. That's right. I, I talk about Tom Hardy. There's a scene in this movie that I think is one of the finest acting scenes ever from Tom, Tom Hardy, because Christopher yeah. Nolan loves to put Tom Hardy in a mask. You know, <laughs> yes, Bane, yes. you know, from Dark Knight Rises. Um, but in this film, um, there's a scene where he's looking at his fuel gasket, yeah. Tom Hardy's character. I know exactly he's what He's on you're a mask. About, yeah. He can see that he's not going to make it. 
but the bummer is going to take out the ship and he has to make a decision. Yeah. Am I going to go save the day? But he kind of realizes that it's a one-way ticket. Yeah. And he acts this and expresses this yeah. all through his eyes in yeah. about one minute. Yeah. And it's incredible. Just from his blinking and his frowns and the way it's like this whole conversation going on in his head mm -hmm. that I got completely. I thought it was amazing. Um, but I agree with you. I mean, the aerial scenes, uh, again, they were they were shot so realistically. They so really good. showed how tough it was. It made me fall in love with Spitfires all over yeah, again. Totally. When I was a kid, I loved Spitfires, the British yeah. uh, planes. Um, anyway, it's a very different kind of war movie. It's very. not gory at all. And you're right. There isn't really a central plot. The film is basically about survival. Yeah. You know, 100%. that really is what it's about. But, um, and you I mean, get that emotion so oh. deeply from the absolute despair and all the, you know, how the, the, the two, the, the French guy and the, the other kid, the main character are trying to like steal their way onto a ship just to survive and yeah. get out. Anyway, I could go on, but I, I felt it so deeply. I was like, I watched this Christmas Eve and was like, this is very heavy for Christmas Eve, but oh my God, it was so good. Yeah, well, it's a PG-13, so it's, it's yeah. not very gory, but it is a war movie. Um, and it, you're right, it's an ensemble, so it's got lots of fantastic actors, but there isn't one standout performance particularly. No. I think this film is a crowning achievement for Christopher Nolan as yes. a director. I think it's a front runner for director for Best Picture. The cinematography is absolutely phenomenal. The editing and the music... Han Zimmer once again strikes oh again God. that the <laughs> so music good. aids every scene and builds the tension incredibly. Anyway, we spent a long time on Dunkirk, yep. but that's my number one film of the year. After three viewings, it still is. Um, and I highly recommend it. A lot of people ask me, is it my favorite war movie? I don't think anything will trump Saving Private Ryan. I really don't. That that film to me is an absolute masterpiece. And, it, you know, where this one might be lacking in character... That one certainly has all the character with Tom Hanks and the different characters there. Uh, but it could easily be my second favorite war movie. Uh, anyway, Dunkirk. Uh, so I think, did you start with Dunkirk or did we both? You did, but okay. it's totally okay because I kind of launched do the, into yeah. it. Do the next one. I'll do the next one. Yeah. Um, this was actually my favorite film of the year. Until I saw it the third time along with Dunkirk. Okay. And then I put Dunkirk back on a uh, number one spot. Blade Runner 2049. I, um, I absolutely loved it. I'm a huge fan of the original, which I know, I don't know if you've seen it yet or you were never a fan of. It's so visually beautiful. The cinematography is incredible. Roger Deakins better get an Oscar. Uh, Ryan Gosling as Kay. Harrison Ford as Rick Deckard. You've got this beautiful Brazilian actress, mm. Anna Diamas, who's basically like a an AI called Joy. Yeah. And then there's this crazy uh, replicant called uh, Love, but uh, played by this, I think, a Swedish actress called uh, Sylvia Hoke or something. She's phenomenal. Jared Leto's kind of the spooky, sinister uh, corporate guy called Wallace. Um, th the story is absolutely beautiful. I saw it twice in the theater again. Absolutely loved it. Here's the third time I watched it, I loved it. But here's why I bumped it down to second. The film is too long. Correct. And I do think that's that did hurt its chances at the box office because it wasn't a success at the box office. It actually lost quite a lot of money. Uh, look, the original did too. It was a total box office failure. And now it's considered one of the best science fiction movies ever made. Uh, Blade Runner is almost three hours long. Uh, Denis Villeneuve really... It kind of looked like he was just given full yeah. rights to do whatever he wanted to he takes his time with every scene it's very slow burning i thought it was beautiful uh, when the action does happen it's you know it's brutal and strong but it's brief um it's really more i mean the cinematography again is gorgeous and it's really it's all about like it, it's thought provoking it's all about what does okay. it really mean to be human so I absolutely loved it. But when I watched it the third time the other day, I was kind of like, you know what? I do love this, but that length really does work against it because right. I wasn't fully engaged 
the entire time like I was with Dunkirk. Dunkirk, I was on the edge of my seat. Yeah, I feel like I could rewatch Dunkirk over and over and over and be completely invested every time. I agree with you on that. Yeah, that I said, loved Blade Runner. But... I still think it's an absolute masterpiece. It is more of an acquired taste. I think number right. one, the built-in fan base helps for people to love it. Right. Um, and number two, you, you have to brace yourself for like an almost three hour long movie. Yeah. But yeah, the, the music is incredible as well. Um, it, it's a gorgeous film. But I was never, know. not for one moment, bored in those three hours personally. Yeah. Well, but that I, was the first time in the theater. I haven't seen it again. Since. Right. So the third time, I won't say I was ever bored. But it did sag a little bit at times, you know. Um, Look, I still think it's a masterpiece, but I just bumped it to my second. Okay, go ahead. What do you got? I'm going with Baby Driver. Okay, that's my third favorite movie of the year. So that's my, um, I I would say, up up next to my top. How many times have you seen it? Just the one time. So here's what's funny. uh, Dunkirk, Blade Runner 2049 and Baby Driver, which are my top three movies of the year. I've all seen three times. Wow. So I I only saw it the one time in the theater, but I loved that movie. I loved everything about it from the directing to the actors, to the script writing. Uh, The music was so awesome. It's such a fun ride and such a cool, unique um, take on like a, a robbery, you know, action movie. Yeah. I loved that film. Yeah, I, look, I agree with you. And it's it's interesting. We have like a war movie. That's this epic kind of mm-hmm. historical war movie. We have this beautiful like science fiction kind of opus magnus. Yeah. And then we just have this fun, thrilling, adventurous film. A uh, Baby Driver out of the three is without a doubt the most enjoyable. Totally. Um, Ansel Egort is the main lead. He's great in I've it. never seen him before. He was in A, a Fault in Our Stars. Oh, wow. You know, um, he's not an actor I really cared for at all, but he was fantastic in it. And the guy... Um, um, well, from... I was going to say Lily James, who's the oh, waitress that he falls in love adorable. with. I thought she was so enchanting. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Spacey's really good in it. I know yeah. there's been a big scandal on him, but he's great in it. Jamie Foxx was awesome. John Bernthal is in it. And then um, uh, who else is in it's it? It's the guy from Mad Men. Oh yeah, uh, John um, Hamm. He was amazing. He is so good, and this <laughs> is one so of his good. best roles yeah. for a long time. He is like batshit so crazy. Good. I loved him. Yeah, um, but you're right. I mean, Edgar Wright is the guy who directed it. He did all those films with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, yeah. uh, Shaun of the Dead, of Which course, I loved Hot all Fuzz. Those movies. It's so action packed. It's so fun. But you're right. Every scene is orchestrated to a song, and I don't know if you know this. He wrote. Uh, the script around the music and around the soundtrack, That's meaning crazy. he worked out the songs first and then wrote the script to that. What a unique take on yeah. a script, right? So unique. Um, it also, I think, has one of the best opening sequences of all time. Amazing. The, the, you know, I, I immediately got hooked with that song Bell Bottoms um, <laughs> by that band. I've forgotten their name, yeah, but um, yeah. the soundtrack is phenomenal. It's such a fun movie. Yeah, and it's basically a simple story about this, this kid who's a driver uh, for bank robbers yeah you know but he doesn't really want to do it and he falls in love with this waitress and he's like he's got like he was in an accident so he's got like a problem with yeah his hearing and he listens to music all the time so he can be focused and then yeah. that makes him an incredible driver uh, anyway uh baby driver is so much fun so again I, I saw it three times that one is absolutely infinitely w- rewatchable oh, yeah. for sure okay i agree good well we're kind of on track um let's see so what else do i have Oh, okay, good. So my fourth one is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I did a two-hour podcast (laughs) all about Star Wars. Him him and his wife bantering Star Wars back and forth. If you haven't listened to that, by the way, it's an epic, epic (laughs) episode. Yeah, that's our last episode. Look, here's the thing. It's Star Wars. Of course I loved it. Of course. You know, it's Star Wars. I love Kylo Ren. I love Rey. I'm totally invested in those characters. Yes, it's flawed. Yes, Ryan Johnson, the director, took some really bold choices and took it in a different direction. And people are going nuts. It's yeah. very, like, critics love it. It's very split with fans. So split. I understand why. Look, we have to say goodbye to the Skywalker legacy. We do. I mean, Carrie Fisher is dead. I know. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure why they didn't keep Mark Hamill didn't around. It bother me at all. I'm I, sorry. I know, it did a bit, but... Here's the thing. I've come to terms with everything in that movie apart from the one scene that still haunts me, which is the super Mary Poppins Leia in space. So that's the one scene. I'm so I with just you on that. Stand. I sat there cringing through that scene. Yeah. I look. 
I think it was cool to show that she has the force because obviously we know she has it, but she never uses it. But it didn't work. The way it was portrayed was so cheesy. So bad. But everything else I kind of yeah, come to grips with. Even did. some of the comedy that just didn't work for me and obviously the, the choice they made with Luke Skywalker. Uh, but I'm so invested in Ray and Kylo Ren, I'm excited. Yeah. What was weird is, uh, which again, I've talked about in detail, it kind of felt like a closing chapter to a trilogy, but it was the second movie. But they're opening Which is a up bit a, new, a new sequence in essence. Well, sure. Well, Ryan Johnson is supposed to write a whole new trilogy, which is why a lot of fanboys are shitting themselves and really worried. I mean, look, it's Star Wars. It's also very long. It's almost three hours long. It's Star Wars. Yeah. It's still got so many glorious scenes. It's got an incredible sequence. One of my yeah. favorite sequences of the year, which is, you know, um, Rey and Kylo so in good. Snoke's chamber and that oh whole God. battle was Amazing. incredible. Um, so, I mean, you have to go see Star Wars. It's still a highly entertaining entertaining movie yeah and just see it for like i walked out thoroughly entertained i didn't sit there nitpicking it i i love like well, i really enjoyed it fanboys do and look yeah. i really tried not to but obviously again there, i'm a critic so there are things i'm going to scrutinize and there were things i didn't like yeah but overall i walked out going i enjoyed that it's such a fun ride and look it absolutely does still feel like a star wars movie so people need to get over it if they hate it so much Find something else to love or hate if that's what you prefer. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, okay, good. Go on. I'm going with Wonder Woman next. Okay, that's on my list. It's a bit further down, but we can talk about so it now. The reason I'm going to have it so high on my list is, A, I had zero ex expectations for that film. I wasn't going to go see it. Tony had an extra movie ticket. I walked in. Oh, that's right. We paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is freaking awesome. From start to end, I thought it was funny loving i mean we went into detail on, on another podcast on wonder woman did we? we did it was one of our first ones oh okay we had just seen it but i in terms of a movie that surprised me and i've seen it uh twice since i loved it yeah look i agree with you uh, number one it's a female director patty jenkins it's only a second movie she did monster like 10 years ago yeah. uh it was a huge hit i think it's the most successful movie directed by a woman so yep. you know it is feminine power all the way that's fantastic uh, but more importantly it, it's a great movie it's great it's fun great. also dc's been having a really rough time of it unfortunately and i think it's certainly the best movie since uh, nolan's i think it's the Batman only trilogy. dc movie i like well see i like man of steel see, I, I actually do i think man of steel is oh, pretty good i was asleep okay that's fine um wonder woman is is highly enjoyable um it tells the story of diana prince wonder woman um and it's played by gal gadot who was pretty unknown yeah. i had seen her in like some of the fast and the yep, furious movies she, as she like a really sidekick done. um she's like this gorgeous gorgeous chick but um she's she's perfect for the role she is she was so good for the role um it was visually stunning the action sequences were phenomenal and actually i think what really elevated that film to a whole new level for me was her chemistry with chris pine wow. it uh, was so oh beautiful. you're right we did talk about it because yeah he surprises me a lot you yeah, know chris me too. pine is hell or high water is another film where he's so good uh in the, he's just so charming in this movie yeah. and their chemistry is fantastic and then they make yeah. a bold choice they kill his character yeah. and it's truly emotional it's steve, steve trevor that was his name yeah. um anyway yeah i agree and the the no man's land scene has already kind of become iconic where she first comes out onto the battlefield and in slow motion i love that uh, it's got incredible Whole action sequence. sequences again and i do agree with critics that the last act falters a bit with the normal kind of over cgi and you know the villain being all yeah but who cares the, the film was still minutes. very yeah. solid um so i i agree i had a bit lower on my list of like best of 2017 but it was a huge much needed hit for dc um they've already greenlit a sequel which paddy jenkins is going to direct and awesome. obviously gal gadot will return and i'd love to see more uh, it's a real bummer that justice league bombed completely so it's yeah. definitely on not on this list because that had a lot of problems even though some things were fun uh, but wonder woman is is just a great entertaining film i agree completely okay so next on my list was guardians of the galaxy vol 2 yeah i'd go with you on that <laughs> here's why that film was so damn entertaining oh, and so, so damn charming yeah i don't care what anyone says it was so fun and it was also... How can anyone not like that well, movie? Critics actually loved it. And mo it was a huge hit. But there were people who... There were some detractors. 
Um, here's the thing. Uh, I mean, number one, the first one was such an unexpected hit. It was a real gamble for Marvel, yeah. um, but it was so fun. I think Guardians of the Galaxy Vol 2 was either just as good or maybe even a bit better. Totally. Because now that I kind of knew the characters, I could just kind of sit back and enjoy the ride. Right from the beginning with, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, baby group scene. dancing. Yeah. Um, but then also what I loved about this movie was it brought unexpected emotional heft with Yondu, Michael oh, totally. Rooker was phenomenal in this film you know and i guess look there are spoilers here you know so his character dies in the end he heroically saves um what's his name uh his chris pratt his his um, star lord yeah peter quill adopted son yeah well you think he's kind of bad but basically he was his adopted son he raised him he taught him how to survive um kurt russell plays ego who is you know star lord's father but he's actually a baddie um and then you've got all the characters drax you know is dave batista he's fantastic rocket groot um gamora uh, just lots of amazing characters visually stunning really funny and to me, it was just pure joy. I've seen it three times as well, actually. I've seen it twice. Yeah, I absolutely loved Fall 2. Uh, I mean, I think he's only making three. James Gunn. That'll be enough. Uh, I don't know. I'd see as many of those <laughs> as I can. They're going to be they in well, they're gonna be in Avengers of oh, Infinity right. War, which will be that. really exciting. So anyway, Gardens of the Galaxy Vol 2, thumbs up. Such a fun ride. What do you so got? So awesome. Um, my next one down is actually Thor 2. Uh, three. Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Three. <laughs> We're on three, two. right? <laughs> yeah. So there was Thor, Thor the Dark World, right. and Thor Ragnarok. Okay. And I'll say. You loved that a lot oh more than God. me. I you enjoyed really it. really enjoyed it. I loved it. No, see, I didn't really enjoy it. I laugh my ass off because it's hilarious. It's a straight up comedy. But that's comedy. enjoyment. Yeah. But um, I mean, I don't want to steal your thunder. I want to let you kind of talk about it first. But here's what I'm worried about. It. I'm really curious to watch Thor Ragnarok again and see what I think of it. Because I think that film works on its comedy alone. But when I strip that away, I think it's quite kind of barren. Yeah, but think about a good comedy of its time is infinitely rewatchable, even even if you know the jokes. You don't remember all of them. Yeah, I hope so. Here's what I mean. Uh, again, okay, so... You're right, the Danny story will, had weak points. Well, no, it's not that. Danny will put spoilers, because we're, we're going to go into yeah. spoilers, but it, there were some huge gaping plot holes and things that I thought were weird. I mean, number one, they blow up... What's it called? His... The planet? No, like Asgard. They Asgard, blow up yeah. Asgard. What's number, wrong with that? Well, that's where they all live. That's where the gods live, so it's kind of weird. But hold on, that's not the worst decision. All of his friends that you see in the other films, they just kill in like a... Like a flick of a hand. All of his friends. He's got those, oh, yeah. like his gang of friends, Thor does, who were in the first two movies. And they just killed them off like nothing. I, I they were just notice. little things like that that <laughs> bug me. Look, Chris Hemsworth, he has a great knack for comedy. It's hilarious. Hulk is amazing. Him You've and got, Loki are just amazing yeah, uh, together. Tom Hiddleston as Loki, wonderful. But again, Tom Hiddleston, like, you know, he's going to double cross him. And then he does. And it's like the same trope. Um, Jeff Goldblum's great in it. Except I, this time he completely preempts him screwing him over. Yeah. I thought it was great. Yeah, I look, loved it. Look, it's it was a huge hit. Uh, Taiki Wetiti, who did like What We Do in the Shadows and The Hunt for the Wilder People. He's the director. Uh, it's a straight up comedy. That's yeah. how it works for me. It's a fun movie. But when I compare it with all the Marvel movies, I, again, Yanni, I need to watch it again. Okay, we'll um, do so. It was on my list because it was very entertaining. Um, but it was kind of forgettable. I kind of forgot about it. I will say Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie. I liked her cool. a lot as well. She was really good. Um, okay, so you had Thor Ragnarok. Okay, so the next on my list is Logan. So Logan came out at the beginning of the year in March. I loved Logan. Uh, you don't look very happy. Here's the thing, and it's probably why you're not so happy with it. I've seen it three times as well, actually. It's a very heavy, somber movie. It is. Other than that, it would actually probably be right in my top three. Um, Hugh Jackman, it's his ninth and final time, apparently, playing Wolverine, Lo- Logan. Patrick Stewart is heartbreaking as Professor X. Um, and then the young girl, I don't remember, I think her name's Daphne Keene. She plays X-23, uh, which you find out is basically Logan's daughter. It's like a clone of him. Uh, it's like an urban kind of Western set in the future. I loved it. I absolutely did. But it's very brutal. And you leave the theater and I, I, you know, after watching it, even on iTunes twice since then, you feel kind of heavy and like, oh, 
exhausted. So I do get that aspect. I'll be honest with you. Um, that's not exactly why I didn't like it. Because I actually can... Oh, so you didn't like it? No. I, I walked out like, okay, that was... Um, Did you just see it once in the theater? I saw it once in the theater. And I'm willing to give it another go. Hmm. But um, the action was great. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say I didn't like it. But I felt it was a story that I've seen several times. The, the, the master and his apprentice. And I don't know, somehow, somewhere in the middle... It lost me. Hmm. And then, then toward the end, I got bored. Okay. And, and that's how I feel about that film. I walked out kind of like, eh. Maybe give it another try. To totally me, it's about, the, to. it's about the anti-hero, his relationship with uh, Professor X, who's kind of now on the brink of dementia yeah. Yeah. with all his mind powers. So he's like basically a walking atomic nuclear bomb. Um, and the young girl and their relationship. I, I thought it was phenomenal. But again, it is a very somber movie. It's also yeah. a hard R, so it's extremely violent, which I love for Wolverine. Because in yeah. the comics, he's 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 a beast, you know? Totally. Um, I loved it. I've seen it three times. And also, it's still in my mind. And it came out towards the beginning of the year, like in March. I remember. It was a huge hit. It was also... Again, Hugh Jackman's Swan Song. It was apparently his last performance as Wolverine. But uh, I definitely That's recommend it. That's a shame because I do love him as Wolverine. Well, I he's actually played really it do. nine <laughs> times. <laughs> but aren't they going to make like 12 more X-Men movies? Yeah, I don't Those know, will but, never I mean, stop. He's like pushing 60, I think. But anyway. He's okay, so amazing. That was mine. Uh, what, what's your oh, next one? Um, you may laugh at this one, but I actually loved this film, which is Beauty and the Beast. You know, I was going to put it on my list and then I took it off because my list was a bit big. Oh. Um, I like that movie a lot, actually. It came out again towards the uh, beginning of the beginning year. Of the, I saw it um, with my family It's in still April. the most successful movie of 2017. And the only it made over a billion dollars. The only film that is has any chance to beat it is The Last Jedi. But since there's only three or four days left at the end of the year, oh. I don't even know if it will. Here's why I enjoyed it probably more than I should have is I was never a fan of the animated Beauty and the Beast, which right. is such a classic. And it, that is one of my favorite right. Disney it's movies. It's beloved by everyone. My yeah. wife absolutely adores it. So when I watch this live action version, it's got Emma Watson, Emma Watson. as Belle. Uh, Dan Stevens is yeah. the Beast. and then, Who I love from Downton Abbey. Yeah. And yeah. then the supporting cast, Kevin Klein as her dad. So and good. The guy who plays a gaston uh, love him he i was, forget his name he was but so he was good that actor and then um his apprentice was oh was josh gad yeah. yeah that was controversial because they made him like homosexual that didn't so bother funny. me at all yeah, but uh, the all the thing. objects the uh, the alarm you yeah. and mcgregor ian mckellen so emma thompson the cast was phenomenal i found it very enchanting i'm not a musical person but i did enjoy it um it was beautifully yeah done. because again i'm not a huge fan of the animation but uh for you why was it um, so okay, lovable. so I am a huge fan. I used right. to watch, obviously... You're the, a girl. <laughs> I'm a girl. I was brought up on actually the first... When Beauty and the By Beast, the way, I know there are men who love it too. The original. <laughs> when Beauty and the Beast came out, my mom, by mistake, bought a pirated version oh, of God. video, a VHS in Crawley. <laughs> uh, she didn't know it was pirated. And then we got it home and it was this horrible quality. But I loved the film. So right. then we got a proper version and... I would rewatch it and rewatch it as a child. I love the magic of that story about, you know, the girl in the little French town with bigger dreams and basically makes it happen through such an odd, strange way of, um, you know, she's just such a good person. Getting kidnapped and becoming a slave to this beast and then falling in love with him. Is that what you mean? (laughs) Something like that. But really, she just decides to see past the outside. Right. And then help somebody become a better person. Well, she sees the beauty within him. Correct. And, you know, the the, the actors were wonderful. I was very happy with Emma Watson. Um, But overall, it was just beautifully done. And I... There's nothing, I have no complaints about what they did with that film. I yeah. loved it. I thought it was very around. charming. I saw it in the theater because my wife like was adamant and dragged me out to see it. But I, I've, it's on Netflix. So I've seen it twice. Actually, I've seen that one three times as well with Dania. I think she's watched it like five times. <laughs> um, it was charming. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do I like it. it. I actually had it, as I said, last on my list. And then it was a bit too big. So I took it off. But so I actually, it's worth 
seeing for After sure. After we saw it in the theater, I made David watch it with me when it came out on Did demand. Did he like it? He actually really liked it, ah. which was really funny. because David's husband, Yeni's husband. And he's, he's a, a very real man man. Man's man. He's like a mechanic who fixes airplanes. But he was really know. into it. That was what was funny. That's great. Anyway. That's awesome. Well, good to He doesn't David. listen to this podcast. He'll never know. <laughs> okay, good. I'll carry on from here. Okay, good. So the next one on my list is one of the first kind of smaller independent movies, mm-hmm. which is uh, The Disaster Artist. I don't think you've seen that I haven't. Yet, right? I really wanted to, but I haven't. Okay, good. So for us Californians, and especially everyone living in mm. Los Angeles, there's a, a film that's infamous here that play, that had late night showings uh, called The Room, and it's basically known as the Citizen Kane of bad movies. So like the worst movie, basically. The best worst movie <laughs> ever made. Okay. I own it. I've seen the original one. It's so bad. Remember when I was saying in an earlier episode, I did not hit her. I did not. Yeah, yeah. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. And you were looking oh at God. me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's one of the famous scenes from that. There's so many like, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Oh, God. Oh, hi, doggy. You know, oh <laughs> anyway, God. all these, it's so bad. And uh, this guy called Tommy Wiseau wrote and directed the film. He's this mysterious guy who claims he's a an all-American guy. He's got a thick accent that sounds like he's Eastern European or something. He says he's in his 20s. He looks like he's 40 or 50. He funded the movie for like two or three million dollars. No one knows where he gets his money from. It's fascinating. Okay. And then this other guy who's his co-star in that film, The Room, uh, is a guy called Greg Sestero, and he wrote a book called The Disaster Artist. And then okay. uh, I think Seth Rogen and James Franco bought the rights for the book. And James Franco directs it, and he stars in the film Saw as that. Tommy Wiseau. Okay. Now, get this. This is what's so meta and crazy about this. James Franco stayed in character as Tommy Wiseau while directing the film about Tommy Wiseau making a film. That's so crazy. And he did it all in <laughs> character as Tommy Wiseau. Oh, my God. It, anyway, The Disaster Artist... Um, Again, I What's think so it's good about that film. Well, here's what I was going to say. Again, it, it's more of a niche market. I think the people who know about the room are the people who flock to the theater to see it. Like right. I was one of them and the theater was full and we loved it. Um, but for people who aren't so familiar, this is a showcase for James Franco. He is phenomenal in this movie. Not just funny, but he gives a really heartwarming and kind of emotional performance because he's just this guy that wants to have, be loved and have a best friend and kind of wants to succeed. Okay. But he's so socially inept and awkward. Um, James Franco is fantastic in it. Uh, he's already got a Golden Globe nomination. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he gets an Os- awesome Oscar nomination. Yeah. He directed the film as well. So the ensemble cast is great. Dave Franco, uh, his brother is in it. Right. Um, Alison Brie, um, Seth Rogen, great actors, lots of cameos. Uh, But to me, what makes the film really brilliant, when I watched it, I loved it. And then I kind of thought about it a bit more and I was like, you know, the film's good. But what makes this film really kind of a must-see is James Franco's performance as Tommy Wiseau. So that's why I I, I think um, it's a great film and should be seen. And that's why I put it on my list. Okay, awesome. All right, what you got? What do I got next? Um, you sound exhausted. No, I'm going down because you've <laughs> said some of mine already. But that's okay. Uh, next one I'm going to go out with is John Wick 2. You're going to go out with? Go <laughs> go with. Oh, that's really a, on your one of the best it of is, 2017. I love John Wick. Okay, I love John Wick. Like the first film. The second I, one was awesome. The first film, I don't know what it is. I've seen John Wick, the first film, 15 times. Yeah. I absolutely love it. John Wick 2, I think I've seen twice um it's a great action movie i enjoyed it but it's not as memorable to me as the first one for sure for me it's just a standalone awesome action spectacle like the martial arts and fight scenes the first one i loved everything about it um so that's why i didn't have the second one yeah honestly i'm getting down to like my last four movies that's okay that are because when i went through and really thought about it and really looked there weren't that many great films that i'm like wow i really want to say 
I loved these. I but... actually think 2017 was a much better year. Yeah. When I compare it to last year, I actually think it was a much better you do? year. Oh, much better. I don't remember, honestly, yeah. the year before. I remember last year specifically, there were only two movies that really blew me away. Right. Deadpool and La La Land. I remember that. That was it. That's true. You know, um, this year there's a lot more. Um, but that's okay. So I'll do the next one. But I may have forgotten quite a few. So yeah. anyway. I'll do the next one. We'll, we'll go through your last ones and then I'll just keep going. Yeah. Um, okay, good. So my next one is War for the Planet of the Apes. Okay, which um, I haven't seen. I didn't see it in the theater. Um, I caught it on iTunes uh, on 4K about a month ago. I absolutely loved it. I was actually really impressed with how good it is. Again, it's a much more slow burner. It's directed by Matt Reeves. Um, Andy Circus, his motion capture performance mm. of Caesar, the main... Uh, you know, ape, it's award worthy. I don't know what to say. He he makes you care about this ape, this character so much. You you feel for him, you root for him over the humans, over, over your own species. Um, All through the movies, you know, you had Dawn for the Planet of the yeah. Apes, Rise for the Planet of the Apes. I liked the first one with James Franco. It was decent. Second one, I wasn't a huge fan of. Yeah. Um, this one, it's beautiful. It, again, it's a bit of a slow burn. Um, Steve Zahn is also great in it. He's kind of the comical um, sidekick as uh, his character is called Bad Ape. He's really funny. Um, it's it's so beautifully done. Uh, it also closes out the story and the trilogy really well. I was going to well. ask you, um, the only reason I have not seen that movie is that I'm worried I'm going to just be in a puddle of tears at the end. Does it end well? In well, some respect. Yes and no. Okay. You know, it's definitely sad. Um, and also, I would say go watch the first two again. I've seen and, them, yeah. Oh, okay, good. You might want to see them again. But uh, I was really impressed. I, okay. I, I, I've, again, I've only seen this one once, but I loved it. Um, and Andy Circus, uh, he really, he needs to be acknowledged. You know, yeah, King totally. Kong, Caesar, Lord Gollum. Oh my God. Uh, it's incredible what he's brought to this, um, okay, to awesome. the table. I, I, um, I really want to see it still. Yeah, I, I highly recommend it. I, I, it exceeded my expectations. All right, what you got? Okay, to follow on closely from that is Kong Skull Island. That's my I, next one. <laughs> yeah, I really love that film. And I saw that way before you and told you to watch it. Right. Um, I didn't get to see it in the theater, which I wish I oh, would have. Oh, I thought you did. No, I didn't make it. So I watched it the minute it came out on on demand and I loved it. Yeah. it and it was so surprising because I, I was like, oh, another Kong movie. Yeah. It, you know how good can it be and i loved tom hiddleston's performance i loved uh samuel L. jackson's performance i loved the whole story i was riveted the whole time and i yeah. and i really liked it yeah that's one of the only films i told you that i genuinely kicked myself for not seeing it in yeah. the theater because that would have been uh, i'm the same cool. as you um i remember i went out to see godzilla in the theater and it was ugh. yeah this film it doesn't deserve to be this good, but somehow it is. I agree. Visually, it's stunning. Yeah. It's beautiful totally to look cool. at, number one. Number two, the action sequences are like riveting, like really tense. Huh. Um, yes, of course, the, the, you know, the uh, Kong is awesome, yeah. but it's so much more than that. Oh, You're right, yeah. the characters are great. Brie Larson, Tom Hiddleston, John C. Riley is yeah. phenomenal. He was so awesome yeah. in that Sam movie. Sam Jackson. Yeah. Um, it, Even it, the army, all his Yeah, troops, all the different characters. Yeah. It's got so, the ensemble. Yeah. You actually care about all these characters. Totally. Like actors I barely knew were really good in this film. Um, it was way better than I ever thought it would be. I absolutely loved it. And I just saw it like a month ago. Yeah. And, and I actually want to watch it again. Um, but I, Can I, I watch it on your TV? Yeah, you? sure. I, uh, I mean, it looks phenomenal on our TV. Be really but, uh, fun. <laughs> I don't want anyone to come and steal our TV now. <laughs> Put it under lock and key. Um, but Kong Skull Island, um, don't skip over this film thinking, oh no, it was ah, good. it's just another stupid popcorn film. This film is kick ass. It, was it really, really cool. is. Okay, good. So. And I'm becoming um, more and more of a Tom Hiddleston fan, like every day. Yeah, I love him. But it, again, it's so much more than that. It, it's oh, yeah. funny, it's entertaining, it's intense, it's action packed, and visually beautiful. And it was, guys, it has Tom Hiddleston. If yeah, you didn't it was get great. Me, it, has Tom <laughs> it does. Okay, good. So here's the next one I have uh, Spider Man Homecoming. Right. I thought you'd, you'd have notice, that on your list. So. This was a good year for superhero movies. It was. Marvel and DC, but yeah. uh, mostly Marvel, but a lot of good superhero movies. Yeah. I like that movie. Um, his what's interesting about spider-man homecoming i saw it in the theater i think with you and my wife yep. and some other friends 
I had a good time. I really enjoyed Tom Holland as the new Spider-Man Peter Parker. I think he's one of the best, uh, you know, versions of what Peter Parker really is like as a person um, and as Spider-Man from the comics brought to the screen. I really do. Um, no disrespect to the others, because actually I'm someone who liked all of the other yeah. versions, but I just think he really nailed it. Um, Michael Keaton as Vulture I thought was fantastic. The setting and school with this kind of John Hughesy vibe was great. Um, it, it was really entertaining. What was interesting was when I left the theater, I completely forgot about the movie. Mm. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. When it came out, I was um, on iTunes. I was like, should I get this? Shouldn't I? And I kind of hesitated and I thought, screw it, I'll get it. And I watched it and I was surprised how much I enjoyed it the second time I saw it. Yeah. I really did. I, I like really enjoyed movie. it again. Uh, and there's a scene with Michael Keaton. Uh, there's a big twist in the film. Uh, again, yeah. I won't give it away, even though I've given away lots of spoilers, <laughs> but there's just this conversation and confrontation between Tom Holland and Michael Keaton. That is a great scene for tension and stuff. It's phenomenal. I liked his little sidekick. He was Yeah, funny. his friend. <laughs> uh, anyway, the film was highly enjoyable. And I mean, who doesn't love Spider-Man? Yeah. So great to see Spider-Man. So Spider-Man Homecoming, again, I was glad it was a hit. We want to see more of him always. So that's why it's on my list. Okay, so it's pretty much my last one. And you're going to be really weirded out that this no, is okay. my last movie. because it's it? Bambi Returns? Bambi <laughs> the <laughs> Revenge? What movie is that? In what know. universe? Uh, Get Out. Oh, I... Get Out's on my list. Oh, good. Yeah, of course um, it is. I love Get Out. Okay, so the the main thing about that was you actually got me out uh, onto that film, and especially because it was directed by someone who's only ever done basically comedy. Jordan Peele who, from Key and Peele. And I listened to his entire his comedy. entire podcast on The Nerdist yeah. and about that <laughs> film and how hard... He worked for six years to get that film made. That's right. And um, it he was... wrote and directed it. Correct. Right? And yeah. it was so unique. I... Something about that film had me riveted. Yeah. Just totally riveted. I watched it here with you. Yeah. We, I, I loved it. I yeah. freaking well, loved it. Get Out is definitely on my list. Um, number one, I'm not a horror fan at all. No. And this was dubbed as a horror movie, but it's actually not. It's not more really. a suspense thriller. I mean, to an aspect, it is pretty scary at I times. I guess so. Um, but yeah, it's Jordan Peele, who everyone knew as this slapstick comedian. <laughs> totally. And he comes out with his like, first movie. And it, not only is it you know, really good, but it's, I think, one of the top rated films of the year, and it was a huge yeah, smash hit. Totally. Great Out for him. I mean, I love that, but um, it is genuinely good. So the story, I mean, it's really kind of a... Spooky concept. Well, it's, yeah, yeah, it's this kind of racial, like... Yeah. I don't know, like study like, of these... The middle class, white, white southern people, people. You know, and then this white girl who takes her black boyfriend to meet her parents and then there's much more sinister things afoot when yeah. he gets there the british actor i don't recall his name he's from black mirror i think it's david or yellow yeah. or something i saw him on um, black mirror he's really good and then allison williams who's from the, girls the girl. who's she the girlfriend is fantastic and amazing. then Catherine keener is the mum. and then i don't remember the name of the father the but he's oh, from west wing okay um, and the Brad funny friend bradley the, whitford oh, okay um, I, I don't know who the friend is, but funny. yeah, it has comedy elements in it as well. It's actually quite funny, yeah. you know, but, um, I, I just, you're right. When we were watching it, I remember that we were just entranced. Totally. The story is, is so it's spooky, it's so creepy, hell. but it's really well acted. Yeah. And here's the thing about Get Out. Look, I'll be honest with you. I don't know that I loved it as much as everyone else did. Okay. Which we is why like it was kind. Of, which is why it was kind of towards the bottom. It was an impressive yeah. debut, totally for showing a new voice, showing someone who like has quite a singular and original voice, and it was it was a very artistically crafted and well made. It was movie. a new type of yeah. movie. Um, they gave it a name on the Nerdist. It actually got its own genre name, and I I'm kicking myself because I don't remember, but they called it like something to do with like a uh something horror like a, a yeah. new sort of genre yeah, it was intellectual yeah, yeah. and i i just I, I loved it well again it was more creepy crawly spooky yeah. than jump scares yeah it's not in any way a slasher it's yeah. it's a creepy movie yeah but i highly recommend get out it, oh, it definitely was on my list do you have uh, anything else i'm done Okay, good. Well, I, I'm almost done on movies, and then we'll yeah. go into TV shows. Yeah, I'm definitely not done on TV. Okay, good. So here, here are the remaining ones I have for the best movies of the year. And again, these are ones I've seen. Yeah. Uh, the next one is The Big Sick. 
Did you see that? You know, I I was gonna put that on my list. I knew you would. I did see it. I really liked it. Like yeah. I would say, I I very much enjoyed it. But I I thought about it and I went, I don't know if I even really care to rewatch it. It was funny and it was sweet, hmm. but there are way more romantic comedies that I would rewatch ahead of The Big Sick. I kind of feel the same, although I actually want to watch it again because okay. I've only seen it once. And Danny, my wife, I think has seen it like three times now. Um, number one, one reason why I really do want to get the film props is so it's uh, Kumail Nanjiani um, and him and his wife, Emily Gordon, wrote this film. It's based on their script of their life and yeah. how they got together. And she had an actual illness and, you know, how they have the, like the clash with life. ethnicities and, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, it, it's quite a moving film yeah. and it's very funny. Um, I loved it. I thought he was great in it. I thought Zoe Kazan, who plays his wife or his girlfriend um, in the film, was really good. And then Holly Hunter and Ray Romano oh, are fantastic, yeah. especially Ray Romano. I remember it was kind of daunting to see Ray Romano like shout and swear and drop <laughs> F-bombs because I don't think I've ever seen him yeah. like that. But um, I enjoyed it. I've only seen it once, but I want to watch it again. So yeah. I think it definitely should be on on the list. And, it, it you good. know, I love to see independent films like that being made. I don't disagree. Yeah. Another film that I've touched upon already is The Lost City of Z. Which so, I haven't seen. So this was a film that just went under the radar. Charlie Hunnam, uh, who plays Perry Fawcett, this uh, famous explorer that vanished almost a uh, hundred years ago. Robert Pattinson from Twilight is really good. He's a good actor. Tom Holland, who plays his son, is directed by this director called James Gray. The cinematography is beautiful. It's a slow burner. Um, I found it on Amazon. It's streaming on Amazon. Check out this movie. I'm going to. Yeah, it, it's sure. it's gorgeous. 100%. Um, it's not an action packed movie, but it, it's it's a really entertaining film. We'll definitely do so. Okay, and then my last film, just because I love to stick it to the man. I put Bright on this list. Yeah, you got so much controversy on that oh, comment. Oh, I did. Oh, and my I, gosh. I loved every moment <laughs> made of me it. Want to, made me want to watch it more. Well, here's the thing. Number one, I love Will Smith. I you love know, Will Smith. And I know Smith. he's had a bit of a rough run over the last decade. Well, look, he has made some stinkers, no doubt. Yeah. I'm sorry. Bright is not one of them. People need to get over themselves. And here's why I made a plug for this. Um, <laughs> I yes, love because, how passionate well, you look, are. Yes, because I'm a stubborn Brit, but... Also because I genuinely enjoyed the film. Right. It is silly popcorn entertainment. And it, it's basically Bad Boys meets Lord of the Rings. It's about Will Smith, who's this cop, an LAPD police officer, and then Joel Edgerton, who's like the first orc cop. And it's basically where dwarves and elves live amongst us. And um, I thought Joel Edgerton was great. Okay. Um, I thought their chemistry, his with Will Smith, was great. Um, I and it's love... on Netflix, right? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Okay. Uh, it's like the most expensive kind of box office, you know, popcorn big movie. I think Netflix dropped like $90 million for oh this. Gosh. Critics just shredded it to pieces. Oh, Some said it was the worst film of the year. Most people who've watched it actually enjoyed it because, again, nobody who made this film was looking to win awards. Right. They were just trying to make a fun film. You haven't seen it yet. No, I am want to. Yanni, yeah. I will almost bet you 10 bucks right here on this podcast <laughs> okay. that you actually will Can we find make a it bet fun. On that? I'm going to shake your hand. Okay, we're shaking hands. I actually think you will leave the movie. I'm not saying you'll love it and think it's the best thing ever, but I'll enjoy it. I think you'll think it was a fun film. I agree. It, it's got some cool ideas. It's fun, you know? It's like there's a fairy like outside and you know, he has to whack out the fairy with a <laughs> newspaper and there's orcs and dwarfs and you see there's one scene that shows like the LA city skyline and then a dragon flying over it. It's pretty <laughs> cool. And there's like magic wands and dwarfs and I'm elves. I'm into and, it. I'm into it. I'll you know, and a it. lot of people had problems with like it's statement on race and because basically like the orcs are like quote unquote like black people and I don't know. I mean, again, I just I didn't think about that. I, I just was watching a film for fun. Yeah. I thought Will Smith was back in form. He seemed to be having a good time. And I just thought it was a charming film. It was funny. It was action packed. I enjoyed it. That's why I'm saying check out Bright. It's on Netflix. You don't even have to go out to the exactly. freaking theater. You can sit down on the comfort of your couch and watch it. <laughs> Okay. okay, rant over. <laughs> that was quite something, Tony. <laughs> I will definitely watch that movie. If not tonight, tomorrow. It's a fun movie. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Okay. Those are the TV films. shows. Well, I'm going to say yeah. one last thing. 
Yes. Uh, there are some films I really want to see that I haven't. Oh, the Shape too. of Water, Guillermo oh del Toro. It's supposed to be one of the most acclaimed films of the year. I Darkest haven't gotten around hour. to it. The Darkest Hour, My Winston husband Churchill, it. Gary Oldman. Did he like it? He loved it. I right. didn't make it that night, but he said it was amazing. Yeah. Call Me By Your Name, um, uh, Lady Bird, Three Billboards Over Missouri ebbing something uh there are a number of films i haven't gotten yeah. around to that i really do want to watch that may be on this list i really wanted to see goodbye christopher robert okay Just yeah saying. I, I don't really care about that I one <laughs> um <laughs> but anyway slap me down so this list was the films we've seen yeah um but if you haven't checked them out we highly recommend all of these films exactly. right Okay, good. So, uh, by popular demand, we're going to cover some TV shows. Do it. So, um, again, we'll just go back and forth. Um, I don't know how we're going on running time, so, uh, but who cares? You know what? We're having fun. This can. Be, this is our last episode for 2017, yeah. so let's enjoy it. Okay, so, I mean, I think you know my number one show, Stranger Things 2. Of course. Um, I'm obsessed with Stranger Things. I won't talk about this one for a long time because we did a whole we episode. Did. Stranger Things, the first one to me, was pitch perfect. Stranger Things 2 was incredible. Amazing. It wasn't pitch perfect. It had a few things, um, but I didn't care. Yeah. Uh, the characters were incredible. What I will say is uh, my favorite standouts was Eleven, Millie Bobby Brown, mm -hmm. and Hopper, mm -hmm. uh, David Harbour. 100%. Their pair up was incredible. 100%. And then, of course... Dustin and Steve Harrington yes. um, was incredible. The I bromance. loved it. Um, and then, uh, which we've already discussed, uh, episodes eight and nine were just mind Out blowing. Of this world. Uh, I think the whole show was incredible. Yeah. Even episode seven, that a lot of people thought was a bit of a distraction. I didn't mind. I rewatched that, by the way, and I liked it the second time. Yeah, because I just told didn't... you I didn't like it, and then I rewatched it, and I liked it. It just didn't bother me. Yeah. And then Sean Austin, I think, was the uh, MVP. Uh, you know, as like a new character, yeah. as Bob Newby, superhero, R.I.P. Um, so good. Anyway, Stranger Things 2. If you haven't yeah, if jumped you, on the yeah, Stranger Things fan, I can uh, get your shit together. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, the sad news is apparently we have to wait till 2019 for I Stranger Things that. 3. Like so a year and a half. That sucks balls. Which is brings upon the one I will bring up next, Game of which Thrones, is Game of Thrones. Which also we have to wait <sighs> until... Oh my God. 2019 for the last six season. Six episodes. Yeah. Oh, it's only six. It's six. I thought it was seven no, episodes. It's six. So this is season eight. Yes. Okay. And it's so, six very long episodes. They're all going to be about 90 minutes. Oh, well, that's good yeah. news. So for a show that's been going on for so long, it just gets better and better. It, I mean, I the thought. The last two seasons have blown me That's away. what I was going to say. I thought season six couldn't be topped. Yeah. And season seven was, I mean, just incredible. Oh my God, so and, good. And it really feels like it's coming to an end game yeah, now. Definitely. Which makes it even more tense. Yeah. Um, I, how I the know. characters have grown, how the, they actually, I, it really took me. I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it, but every single episode is like a, an incredible adventure movie. Right. It's like watching a whole Lord of the Rings film Absolutely. style with in terms of the quality, the filming, the magic, the everything it brings to the table. I I I love it so yeah. so much. So what I've always said is there's nothing better on te television no, streaming there is not. than there than Game of Thrones. It's epic filmmaking it's better than any cinematic theatrical release it truly is it's just absolutely it, it's mesmerizing yeah. uh, the characters i mean john snow khaleesi aria yeah. uh, i love everything about it anyway we aren't going on a roll about game of thrones but um so stranger things 2 is netflix game of thrones is hbo yeah catch up it's incredible um all right my turn right yep Okay, let's see. Okay, you won't have the next one, but I loved it. Twin Peaks, The Return. I wanted to see that. It's on Netflix, You'll right? watch it like, what the fuck is this? I'm not going <laughs> well, to lie to you. it's Twin Peaks. Um, <laughs> try and watch the original. Okay. So Twin Peaks is a show from David Lynch, yeah. who is a very bizarre director, who talks like this, yeah. really oh, loud. Cray -cray. Yeah. and Well, he's a genius. Yeah. But... Um, so Twin Peaks ran for, I think, two seasons in like 1990. It was yeah. one of the most critically acclaimed shows of all time. You'll love season one for sure. Season two goes a bit batshit crazy. Um, so it took almost 20 years for it to come back. Isn't it like super weird? Total like, surreal. Okay. Yeah. I love total that Total mindfuck. Yeah, yeah. One episode 
You've told me about this, yeah. It is 45 minutes of sounds <laughs> and images that make absolutely no sense. And it was the most bizarre experience of my life. <laughs> but I loved it and I still highly re recommend it. Okay. Kyle MacLachlan is back um, as uh, Agent Cooper and he plays like a dark and a light side of Agent Cooper. He actually plays three characters. He's phenomenal. And it's a who's who of cast. It's got all kinds of famous uh, people in it. Um, I absolutely loved it. It was mesmerizing. And in terms of ambition, I mean, it's the most bizarre but um, ambitious thing you'll see on TV. Cool. Um, to answer your question, it was on Showtime. Okay. Oh, that's um, why I don't have Showtime. Yeah. Anyway, oh. Twin Peaks The Return, it, it's phenomenal. Okay. And I do hope that they do another one. Okay. Um, but I highly recommend it. What do you okay, got? Okay, awesome. My next one is A Handmaid's Tale. I love i'm really glad Handmaid's you put Tale. that there because danny my wife is obsessed with it it's one of the most acclaimed shows it's on hulu elizabeth moss has just won all the yeah. awards i saw and the very first validly. yeah i saw the first episode and really enjoyed it i just didn't get hooked you danny's seen it like got twice to try again tony yeah. i'm serious um it's very dystopian, it's very dark di yeah, future, yeah dystopian right? dark future which i love i love any concept that's you know but this, this whole twist on it, the whole, and the, the every What's single <laughs> actor, you know what it's about. Not really. I mean, not really. The I've whole seen the concept first is that uh, mankind has basically come to a point where women can't produce children. And it's very rare for a woman to be able to naturally give or give birth at all mm. and, and for the babies to survive. And just sort of out of nowhere in almost Gestapo style, this military government takes over and corrals fertile women, puts them into this convent, completely like creepy and messed up um, controlled system where they are basically rented out in essence, slaved out to families to be the... Um, what do you call it? The birthing, the mother, the surrogate. The so. sur yeah, and and they have rituals and um, like the 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 wife is in the room when the man has sex with yeah, her. Yeah, it's got that hot blonde chick from Dexter mm -hmm. and from What's Chuck. What's her name? Yeah, I she's don't know brilliant. Her name, but she's gorgeous. She and is Josephine's his Josephine's the, is the, the, main, the husband, and yeah. he just so you know is fucking amazing really? in this. Yeah, so the whole thing is it's uh, elizabeth moss it's it's obviously all based around her she's married she has a kid and um anyway shit goes bats shit crazy and she um is put in that family with josephine's and and this wife and the whole situation with this family and the way it's put across it's so nuts mm. but you but it's so believable that this could actually be happening okay and then not to give it fully away, but this whole um, stuff starts happening to do with a rebellion okay. against all of this because it, it, it's really messed up. And um, oh, it's just so good. Well, and look, it's got the girl from Gilmore Girls yeah, in it. Alexis a, yeah, Alexis Bledel and she's Max brilliant. Ben Geller's in it as well. She's he's brilliant. The, he's the driver guy. Okay. Um, look, so, I mean, it's critically acclaimed and I love Elizabeth, um, Moss from yeah. Mad Men, from movies. She's fantastic. So I love seeing her in the spotlight. Um, people need to check it out and I know I need to get off my ass and finish it. You should. No, <laughs> um, I loved it. It's uh, way up there for good. me. Handmaid's Tale for sure. Okay. The next on one Hulu. I, yeah, on Hulu. Next one I have is Master of None on Which I Netflix. I have not seen. Yeah. Uh, Aziz Sanzari. This is a show that has really crept on me. I, I saw the first season. I found it kind of whimsical and cute, but I didn't think it was amazing season two um the writing on this film is uh, sorry on this show is really quite good yeah. um and i was never a fan of Az aziz Sanzari at all and he's quite charming and endearing um i recommend it there's not much more to say about it um it's just a it's a very solid well-written show it's, and it's quite on quite smart netflix oh, it is. okay master of none awesome what else you got Orange is the New Black season five. Yes, I, I definitely had that. I thought it was one of the best seasons. It, it was absolutely awesome. It's action packed. Um, it, it delves into a whole new, to me, like aspect of the characters that I really liked. It was a little less, you know, in the previous uh, uh, seasons, they do a lot of um, zoning in on the back history of a lot of characters. They don't do that quite as much in this season, 
they they concentrate on a lot of present time stuff, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, so I had never been the hugest fan of Orange is the New Black. You were like up and down on well, it. Well, see, I got my wife, Danny, into it, who yeah. loves it. Um, it's uh, Genji Cohen who who did yeah. Weeds, which I loved and Danny loved. Um, season one, I wasn't a big fan of. Danny loved it. Season two, I absolutely loved. And then the one, like the three, one with right? the V. Oh, I yeah, think yeah. that's season two. The one with V as yeah, the, the main antagonist yeah, was incredible. Yeah. Then I didn't really like any of the other seasons until the last one, especially with Pussy. Uh, sorry, Pussy. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> Pussy. Um, yeah. uh, so heartbreaking. She's in Handmaid's four. Tale as well. Yeah. That girl, Tamara uh, Wiley or Samara Wiley. She went straight Wiley. into that job, yeah. Anyway, that last, I only watched the last episode of like season oh, five and, and it was oh, heartbreaking four. when yeah. Pusey uh, dies. Um, but so then I got invested again in season six and it oh, this was, was I, six. I thought this was five. Okay, then season yeah. four. See, I, I don't know. Yeah. The last uh, episode of the season before yeah. this season yeah. this was, five. Um, was the only one I saw, which I liked. And then this season, I, I totally got hooked in again and, and I loved it. It was just very solid. It's such an ensemble cast. What I find funny is you don't even care about that main character anymore. Uh, Piper. I know. Whatever. <laughs> She's so you, like, you don't whatever. Even care. Laura Prepon, I still kind of like, but it's really an ensemble. You oh, know, yeah. Crazy Eyes is fantastic She's and the amazing. Russian and all the different characters. Um, but yes, I, I, I think the girl that's like a major drug addict who's from like American Pie movies. She was great too. Yeah. She's awesome. Anyway, I agree. I think that this season of Orange is the New Black uh, was one of the most solid and yeah. one of the strongest. So that's Netflix again. You'll see Netflix is just mm. crushing they the game crushing, on yeah. shows. It's yeah. insane. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, The Crown. Um, yes. I loved Which The I Crown. Which I still haven't finished. <laughs> Season two or season one? Season two, I haven't finished. Okay, so oh, I love season, season one. one. Came out last year yeah. uh, around Christmas, and I immediately fell in love with it. It's Again, incredible. I'm British. Uh, Claire Foyle, the girl who plays a young Queen, queen Elizabeth, is just phenomenal. Yeah. Matt Smith, who's a, one of the Doctor Who's um, as Prince Philip, fantastic. And John Lithgow as Churchill. Oh, I mean, incredible. who knew at first? I was like, wow, an American cast as Winston Churchill. I'm sorry, he, he was nailed great. it. He was great. Season two was, I think, even better. Oh, awesome. I absolutely I'm loved still it. Only on episode so I won't, one. I won't talk more. It span, it's, it spans like a whole decade. You know, she's not coming back for season three, and what? neither is he, because it jumps another decade. Oh. So they've cast a lady called Olivia Coleman, who I didn't know at all, but she's in a show that I'm going to mention on this okay. list. Okay. So now I'm kind of excited because she's fantastic. Um, but anyway, this um, season two goes into the the sixties. Um, oh, okay. I, I loved it. It's absolutely awesome. fantastic. It's such rich, um, sumptuous storytelling. Yeah, and just so you know, listeners, the crown is is beautiful. It's it's stunning. It is sometimes slow. It is not an action oh, sure. show. It is a stunning. Well, this is a you know, historical, historical piece. Look, I yeah. tell you, there were things. Some of these episodes, which might be causing some controversy that showed like some history about like Prince Philip and uh, th uh, the Duke of um, Cambridge. Anyway, I don't remember the exact names, but don't that, spoil too much that I was it. quite shocked with, okay. which I, I, mean, I still don't know if they actually were true. And I actually Googled some things and was quite shocked with some of wow. the things that were revealed. But anyway, The Crown, I highly recommend. It's a, a really fantastic Absolutely, show. Absolutely, 100%. I'm with you on that. What it's else on my got? list too, even though I haven't finished it. <laughs> Finish the it. next one on my list is, which I still haven't finished either, is The Punisher because okay, I that's really awesome. loved it. Punisher was on my I'm, list. I'm on like episode five or something and I love it. Yeah, so it's eight episodes. John Bernthal, um, you know, he just kicked ass in Daredevil season. Known as Shane season. from Walking Dead. Yeah, so John Bernthal plays Frank Castle, He's aka incredible. The Punisher. He was in season two of Daredevil. Yeah. Um, very well received. So, you know, they, it is they very, fast very tracked. heavy duty. Yeah. So they fast tracked his own show, The Punisher. Um, it's actually quite slow building at first. And then the yeah. last episodes, which you haven't seen yet. I mean, if you think it's heavy duty now, you have no <laughs> idea. The last two episodes are bat shit crazy. So heard, yeah. Like brutally violent. It is very violent. Um, but you know what? That is Frank Castle. And yeah. he was one of the, the roughest and most violent kind of comic book characters. Right. He was very different. Um, I also like it because some of the other characters are actually quite good. Like yeah. the guy who plays Micro, uh, is, I don't know the actor's name, but he was actually has a real storyline. Right. You get invested in him. I, I liked him. 
Um, anyway, I highly recommend yeah. Punisher. It was, it was a hit. They've already greenlit season two, so I'm excited for that. Yep. Um, okay, good. So you had Punisher. Uh, let's see. Okay, Glow. Also on Netflix. So the Punisher is on Netflix. Okay, this didn't get seen by enough people. Glow is phenomenal. It's on Netflix. It's Alison Brie. Um, and it's this other blonde girl called Betty Gilpin, who I haven't seen enough, but I love her. She's also in American Gods, which is also on my list. Yeah. Um, it's gorgeous um, ladies of wrestling glow. And it's based on a true story of this woman's wrestling team. Yes. And Mark Maron, who's a, a comedian, is basically this guy who puts together this thing. And uh, it's really good. It's a, it's a, um, what her name, uh, what's her name? Uh, Katie Na Kate Nash, mm -hmm. the singer, the British singer is in it. She's really kidding? good in it. Yeah, she's really good in it. Um, mm -hmm. it's got a great ensemble. Um, it's funny. It's quite moving. I really enjoyed wow. it. It's called Glow. Uh, people need to check this show out. It got incredible reviews. Critics loved it. Barely anyone watched it. So please watch Glow Netflix on Netflix. Again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Your turn. Um, this one I think you didn't see that I really enjoyed is The 100. Oh, no, You've I didn't. have never seen but it. But that's from this year? Well, Hasn't the last been season going... was oh, from oh, this oh, year. Oh, okay. I mean, that's the same with most of these things. Yeah, yeah, it's, I guess so. Yeah. Um, I added it because I had never seen it. Is it, it popular? Because I've honestly never heard of it <sighs> I, other It was than recommended to me from a friend. I don't okay. know how popular it is. It has like has a lot of reviews and everything i thought it was brilliant a lot of reviews uh, yeah like good ones stars i guess <laughs> on Netflix. a lot of reviews i don't know um do you want to just give it a plug <laughs> yeah i mean all i want to say about it is it, it's kind of a futuristic action adventure i really enjoyed it i got very invested in it i'm waiting for the next season to but come out do you out. think it's one of the best shows of 2017 for it's me, okay yeah. if you do oh okay good I tony just, you watched you about weren't seven making a times. very good defense for it well you like <laughs> shut me down immediately no, you said it's got a lot of like, reviews <laughs> like no from people like right. Like people have told me about it and said okay. it was good, so I watched it and I really enjoyed it. So I tell people to watch it because it's really enjoyable. I've seen it on Netflix a few times, and look, I'll tell you this: you'll be happy. A few times I said, "Oh, maybe I should check this out," because my one friend Yenny has mentioned it to me. <laughs> but I will say I've never heard of it. Um, no, it's it but was it really could good. Be awesome. You know who's in it? You're gonna laugh. Who? You texted me about a Christmas movie that you you and Danny watched called mm -hmm. like Christmas Inheritance or yeah. something. It's that girl. That's oh, the main character. Really? She's Australian. Well, Christmas yeah. Inheritance was terrible. <laughs> I'm so sure it was. That did not help. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, good. So it's called the one. I'm not trying to be facetious. It's called the 100. The 100. No, it's it's about 100 kids who get sent down from basically it's Earth has been um, you know destroyed by radioactive bombing okay and you know there's there's a certain amount of people up in a space station and they send down a hundred kids to see if earth is livable okay and then shit shit goes crazy well, on look, earth guys listeners it's got reviews <laughs> <laughs> it's got star Tony thingies does this podcast literally to make fun of me <laughs> well you bring a lot of comic gold yes, I know. <laughs> all right um no problem so uh the hundred I on really netflix liked it. right yeah. okay good so my next one is american gods Which um I haven't seen. so number one it's on stars um, season one was very ambitious, very sumptuous, quite slow building. Um, number one, it was a shoe in for me because it's based on Neil Gaiman's book. Um, he's one of my favorite authors of all time, but the show is very ambitious. It's very beautifully shot. Um, it's about this character called Shadow, um, who played by this guy called Ricky Whittles, who's from 100 actually from oh, okay. that show, I believe. Um, and he meets this guy called Mr. Wednesday, which is Ian McShane. Oh, okay, yeah. um, but then basically you find out gods live amongst us. Right. Um, I really enjoyed the first season. Um, it was a slow build. Uh, I'm really looking forward to season two and hoping right. it really expands upon the world. But it's Neil Gaiman. The book is fantastic. It's on stars. Check out American Gods. What do you got? Oh, and then, sorry, that's where I first saw Betty Gilpin. Okay. She's only in like one or two episodes of it. She plays like the best friend of Shadow Moon's um, wife. And she was phenomenal. You know when you see an actress for the first time and they just it make an impact on you totally. and immediately? That's what she did. I was like, who is this chick? She's incredible. And then I saw her in Glow. And I was so uh, okay. happy. She's like the lead with Alison Brie. Okay, cool. And she's fantastic. Whenever you say Alison Brie, I think of Brie Larson for some uh, reason. Oh, Alison I really Brie like, by is uh, married to Dave Franco and oh, she's... Okay. Um, She's from Mad Men and she's from Community, uh, the okay, TV okay, show. Okay. 
So oh, okay. the rest of mine you're going to pretty much laugh at because oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> here's the comic relief Bring right it. here. Because I don't watch, just so everyone knows, I watch about 1% of the amount of television Tony sees. I don't I watch just, a lot of television. But somehow you manage to watch a, no, <laughs> not cable maybe, but you oh, right. watch streaming. a lot of streaming shows. Okay. I have this year been quite busy. And not been able and to I watch haven't. as much television. It's part of my job. I, exactly. That's All right, what, I'm what saying. do you got? I'm just saying. Um, okay, she's just saying. You're gonna laugh. Does this one have reviews too? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one has reviews. It's Riverdale. I okay. love this show. Can I tell you something? I put it on my list. I love this um, show. I used I, to love the Archie comics. I, okay, I thought it was ridiculous. Danny absolutely loves it. She's been campaigning. She got me for into it. it. She watched it twice. I finally watched it. I guess I didn't tell you. I binged season one in like two days. That's I loved it. hilarious. Look, I, I'm an old bloke as well. I used to read the Archie comics. I, I read tons of them. Um, it, it's very entertaining. It's yeah. a bit melodramatic. Totally. But it's, 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 it's CW, actually, so it's... But yeah. for CW, it's actually quite good. It's, it is quite It's quite dark, beautifully yeah. shot. And uh, it's actually got a real storyline. Yeah. I you like know, the yeah, cast. It's about... Jughead and uh, Betty Archie and, and Betty Archie and, and Veronica. Veronica. Uh, but the the actors are, are all quite good. Yeah. Uh, you know, the main guy is the kid from Big Daddy, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> With oh, Adam Sandler. He, that's the kid? The little baby kid. Oh my Cole God. Hauser I just knew him as the kid from A Dog's no, Purpose. Cole Sprouse or something. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, he's great. Um, I mean, they're all, I mean, you no, say no, great. Sorry, that's but... Jughead. The oh, guy who oh, plays Jughead. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That makes more sense. The main guy who plays Archie is the main kid from A Dog's that's Purpose. Right. That's movie. what I was thinking yeah. of. Yeah, I'm happy with how they cast the characters based on my, you know, ideas from the comics yeah. in terms of what I pictured when I read them. And it, you know, it has um, Marisol it's, Nichols, who yeah, I like, Smarter so I was happy to Marisol see her. It has Marisol Nichols, it has Ski Ulrich, exactly. Luke Perry. All these, yeah, I like the well, actors that play the parents. From the 90s yeah, exactly. They, which was quite smart. Very smart. And, yeah. I, and I like Ski Ulrich, I love the... Luke Perry's in it, etc. Anyway, I love the show. It's one that I actually really enjoy. Look, I can't believe I'm saying it, but I, I did actually give in and I actually enjoyed it and I will watch season and two. Season two, I've I'm already mid it. Yep. It's record it's mid season two now. It is not as good as season one, but now it's picking up and becoming as good as season one. Like the first three episodes weren't as good, but I All right, well it's very popular and I guess you can see why. So you're hearing yep. it now. Riverdale, check and, it out. And guys, just so you know, it's sort of a, like, it's not just a drama show. It's more like a detective-y crime right. sort of show. Yeah, anyway. set in like a high school setting. In a high school setting, yeah. Okay, well, my next one is kind of along that theme, but I actually think it's a bit better, which really surprised me, which is This Is Us. Um, I haven't seen it. Right. And that is the kind of TV show I usually, like, repel Never against. Watched, yeah. uh, but it's, it's uh, Milo Ventimigla. That good-looking dude with the weird name. It's okay. Mandy Moore, believe it or not. Oh, Sterling wow. K. Brown. Um, it, it's really... It's just about family and... The Gilmore Girls Relationships. Guy? The Gilmore guy? Isn't yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's Milo Ventimiglia. Oh, that's who that is. Okay. Uh, it's just... It's very well acted. It's It should be melodramatic, but it's not. It works. Okay. It It really hits the, uh, you know, the heart and tugs at the heartstrings and... It's really well acted. I don't know what to say. It's cool. one of the shows that Danny, my wife, and I can actually watch and enjoy together. Nice. Uh, it was a huge hit, and I see why. It's very, it's very well done. So cool. This is us. I really want to watch that. It's Hulu. Uh, no, it's like a cable show. So I'm, I'm not I sure. Maybe NBC on. or something. But season one is on Hulu. It, it is on. Yeah, Hulu. Yeah, season one is on Hulu. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of an oddball, and you're going to be like, "Wait, isn't that on forever?" But I'm going to do a shout out for Modern Family. Because oh, I okay. love, <laughs> I, I love family. Modern Family, yeah. But if we did that, then there would be like South Park and I know. Um, but what else? And what's is the other to be on one? My list? The, this is what I watch. The Goldbergs. And, no, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, Modern Family. I think it's on like season twenty nine thousand or something. <laughs> what is it season nine? It's season like 10. nine or ten. Yeah, it is good. Just I enjoyed for it for sheer um, brilliant writing and comedy. It's one of the only shows my husband and I can watch together. Yeah, so we look, love if, it. If anyone hasn't caught on, yeah. Modern Family is one of the most popular yeah. sitcoms on TV that's been going for like a decade. Check it out. It is it, brilliant. Each episode is 20 minutes. It, it is very witty and it is very smart. Yeah. I, I watch it. Absolutely. I just wanted to give basically a shout out for it in case sure. anyone hasn't seen it. Sure. Okay, good. So the next one, which I discovered on Netflix, it's in season three now. Uh, this airs on BBC America. It's called Broadchurch. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, vaguely, but so I haven't seen it. So it's another Doctor Who, David Tennant. Okay. And then it's this British actress called Olivia Coleman. 
she is he's great in this but she is the revelation she is phenomenal okay. in this it's a british uh crime okay murder mystery show okay. set in this small sea seaside village called broadchurch awesome. um it's really good and it's, it's i enjoy it yeah, it's all totally British. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it, it got me excited for season three of The Crown because I was really bummed out when I heard that Claire Foyle was leaving. Right. But when they said that Olivia Coleman was going to play the Queen, yeah. I was like, oh, well, she's fantastic now that I've seen her in Broadchurch. So uh, I, I'm giving that a plug because people need to check it out. It's on Netflix. Cool. What else you got? Um, Last season of Sherlock. I adore the show Sherlock. Okay. Benedict Cumberbatch, Yeah, that Martin dropped Freeman. in January, so it is okay. this year. Oh, okay. That's what I was going to say, because that was a long... Was I saw that like a year ago, it, it felt was, like. It was January. They always drop it right after New Year's. Yeah, those are fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of weird as a TV show, because each episode is basically a full-length movie. It is. It's like it's an hour and... Minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so fantastic. Though. Sherlock, if you haven't checked out Sherlock, it is an incredible show. Benedict Cumberbatch with Martin his Freeman Hobbit, Hobbit sidekick. Um, <laughs> no, is, Watson, not Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, He's Benedict Holmes. Cumberbatch is Sherlock Holmes and Martin, Martin Freeman, Freeman is Watson. Yeah. So this last one was kind of um, full of controversy and this and that. Somebody gets killed off, but it was an amazing, amazing s- season. And if sure. you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Yeah, that's so that's on Netflix too, right? That's on Netflix. Okay, good. All right, the next one I have is a newer one on Netflix, which is this German show called Dark. Oh, right. Um, you haven't checked it out no, yet, right? I, have not I highly it. recommend. This show is a mind fuck. Uh, it, it's really bizarre. Um, it's a German show, so you can do an English dubbing, which is kind of weird. Mm. I actually watched it that way. Or you could do it with subtitles, um, which apparently is the preferred way. Um, it can be a bit melodramatic at times, but the plot and the storyline is really unique and original. Cool. Um, I actually won't say much more than that because I don't want to ruin it for people. A lot of people liken it to like a shoddier Stranger Things, and it certainly does have some similarities, but it, it, it's its own thing. Um, I do recommend it. It's called Dark. It's, it's pretty cool, and um, it gets very twisty and turny. So uh, cool. I'd definitely check that I'm out. I'm definitely going to. All right, what I'm else out. you got? Are you done? Okay, good. So let's wrap this up because I know we're... Probably yeah, at about over. an hour and a half already. Well, that's okay. It's our last episode for the year. So uh-huh. we're going to have fun with it. All yeah, right. Let's some see. of yours I may have seen. I may have not. I don't know. Yeah, I'm almost done, actually. So um, I've only got two more. Okay. Um, Future Man, which is on Hulu. Okay. It's from um, Seth Rogen produced it and Josh Hutchison, I think is his name. Okay. It's this batshit crazy comedy <laughs> about this kid who like wins a computer game. And then it's almost like the last starfighter then he gets like selected in real life to be like the savior um it's like a hard r-rated tv show it's like really crude and rude but it's actually quite smart um i actually really enjoyed that i binged the whole season on hulu um and then um dirk gently's holistic detective agency i I really want to see that it's also on hulu uh it's got this British actor, I don't know his name, who plays Dirk Gently, who's a, who's this kind of eccentric, weird kind of um, detective who detects things basically by coincidence and happenstance. Mm. And then Elijah Wood is his kind of unwilling sidekick. Cool. Um, it was way better than I thought it would be. It, cool. it, it's actually quite dramatic. It's quite, it's got, I mean, it's really smart and twisty and turny. Um, I think season two already came out. I've only seen the first season. Um, I really loved it. Cool. Okay, good. So that's our list. Yeah, that's the best of 2017 movies and TV shows. Um, Check those out. You know, make a list of the ones you haven't seen. Um, We really recommend those. And then, look, here's the last thing I'm going to do by uh, request of Miss Money, Yenny. Uh, before we end this episode is, you know, again, by the time this drops, it will be 2018. It will. So I'm going to do a little preview on movies coming out in 2018, um, just so you guys kind of know what to look forward to. Um, there's actually a lot of good films coming out yeah, next I'm year. I'm excited. Um, so I'm just going to rattle off some of them, okay? Yeah. Ready Player One. Steven Spielberg yeah. looks like a really good comeback. Anyone who's read the book... Um, will be excited for this and film. And I haven't, and it looks great. Yeah, so if you haven't, you should check out the book. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's such a 
mashup of the 80s and pop culture, science fiction. Um, it looks very ambitious and epic. Awesome. Um, 1517 to Paris. Did you see the trailer that dropped for no. that? It's Clint Eastwood. It's a true story of three heroes, Marines, who thwarted a terrorist attack on a train. And Clint <gasps> Eastwood made this bold choice to use the real life heroes to that. play themselves. Oh my gosh. Watch the trailer and if you have no heart if you don't shed a tear. Oh, it's this is really the one moving. you were okay. Um I, I meant to watch that trailer. Fifteen okay, awesome. seventeen to Paris. Clint Eastwood directed it. He uses the actual real life people awesome. to play themselves. It looks really good. Um Black Panther. Um, mm. That looks cool to me. Okay. It does. I, I think it looks, looks really right. cool. Michael B. Jordan. Uh, looks like it would be fun. Uh, Annihilation I'm interested for because it's Alex Garland. He's um, one of my favorite directors. He wrote The Beach. Oh, cool. Um, and he wrote and directed Ex Machina. Um, and Natalie Portman stars in it. So cool. we'll see. Uh, the Predator comes out. They're doing a new, like, you know, kind of, oh, wow. uh, what do you call it? Like reboot, reboot. of The Predator. We'll see. Uh, Avengers Infinity War is probably the film I'm most excited Me for. Too. It just looks batshit crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's looks no awesome. there's no way that's not going to be the most successful film of 2018. Even more so than the next one on my list, um, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Yeah. I'm actually really nervous for this film okay. uh, because the directors got fired three quarters of the way through. Ron Howard took over. Apparently the film was not what they wanted it to be at all. There's a poster that got released that it literally looks like the front cover of a teen romance novel. Oh, no. Apparently, it's not the real poster. I'm worried. Of course, I'll watch it, and I think it will still make a billion dollars. Will it be good? I don't know, but we'll all be standing in line for Solo, a Star Wars story, either way. Okay, uh, Bumblebee. Again, I'm a sucker. Um, it's Transformers. It's a spinoff. Oh, but number one, I love Bumblebee, and number two, it's with Haley Stanfield from The Edge of Seventeen. Okay. Um, so I'll I, probably, I'm just so over the films. I'll but, probably yeah. a sucker and check it out. Yeah. Um, the next one is uh, Ocean's Eight. Now, I, I, my eyes rolled on this, but the cast is so Ocean's alluring. Eight. Ocean's Eight. It's a spinoff with women. It's Kate Blanchett, oh, Sandra I'll totally Bullock, watch that. Rihanna, Mindy Kaling. I mean, the cast is phenomenal. Oh my god, I'll totally phenomenal. watch that. That sounds awesome. Yeah, the trailer doesn't look very <laughs> no? good, oh, but dear. the cast is to die for. So we'll see. Deadpool two. No brainer. Oh, it's going to be incredible. Yeah. Um, X Men Dark Phoenix. Okay. Who knows? Um, that's with Sansa Stark playing the oh, Dark cool. Phoenix. So that should be exciting. Robin Hood. There hasn't been a lot of buzz, but it's uh, Taron. I heard of it. It's Taron Egerton, Eggsy <gasps> from Kingsman. Awesome. As Robin Hood. That so excites me. They've I like tried him. to do several Robin Hoods, but uh, he's a really Honestly, charming actor. So. Nothing since Prince of Thieves has done anything right. for me. <laughs> you, just, you still love Kevin Costner. I do. I just watched it again over Christmas. Everything I do. I do it That's for not you. Kevin Costner. Brian Adams sings the <laughs> theme know. song for like, 27 years old. <laughs> See, I, I always have to break into songs, so Come on, I took Morgan my chance. Come on, Morgan Freeman, they were awesome in that movie. I it was told a you, great movie. When it came out, I loved it, but I just think that film does not hold up well. I, I, I enjoyed it just as much. <laughs> Let's keep the course. Anyway. <laughs> it's okay. Good, Egerton. All right, here we go. Um... Okay, A Wrinkle in Time. I, I don't okay. know. I mean, it's got Oprah Winfrey. It's got an incredible cast. Um, Ava DuVini um, directs it. It's a female director. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the Incredible 2s. Uh, Brad Bird too. coming back. I love The Incredibles. So, Which you still need to screen for me. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, Isle of Dogs, which is like an animation. Uh, it's Wes Anderson. Oh. I love Wes Anderson. He does really quirky films. A Star is Born, it's Bradley Cooper directing it, and it's Lady Gaga. Looks okay. kind of interesting. Oh, of course, Mary Poppins Returns, Emily oh Blunt. God. You just can't cast that film better. No, that is uh, the best person yeah. to play. I mean, she's Mary perfect. Yeah. Otherwise, I think people would be like going crazy. Yeah. But because it's Emily Blunt, she's just so perfectly she cast. Perfect. No one has a problem with it. Isn't it incredible yeah. when things work out like that? Yeah, I've and not then, seen a bad word about it. Oh, no, because she's she's perfect. Yeah, she, she is. She's like a you know reinvention of Mary Poppins. And then uh, Linwell Miranda from Hamilton is the guy playing Dick Van Dyke's role. Oh, so, cool. Uh, I'm excited for that. Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's the sequel to Ant-Man. I love that. that film. 
Mission Impossible Six. I mean, oh, Tom Cruise. He God, this is he a keeps good going. List. Yeah, uh, I mean, Mission Next Impossible year, Five good. almost exceeded Mission Impossible Four, which was better than all the ones before it. So mm, they just keep going. They'll just man. keep going. Aquaman. Uh, I don't know. Everyone loves Jason Momoa's yeah. abs. We'll see how the movie is. Uh, Mamma Mia, here we go again. Yeah, baby. <laughs> the trailer actually looks really cute. I can't wait. Uh, the big controversy, uh, because the trailer dropped, is Meryl Streep isn't in the present time. It's a flashback oh. of Lily James as her. So everyone thinks that her character dies in the film. Oh. Anyway, who knows? I've seen Mamma Mia, the first one, way more times than I like <laughs> to admit because my wife loves it. It is charming. Um, Danny and, it, and I will go and yeah, see it. It was a huge hit. Well, she'll probably drag me to watch it. So, Mamma Mia, here we go yeah, again. David ain't watching that one. <laughs> um, Tomb Raider, I don't know. It's a Alicia Vikanda. I like the look of her as Tomb Raider. I yeah, kind of do. She has the look. We'll see. Um, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, we'll Chris see. Pratt. I don't know. The yeah. trailer did not do anything for me, so we'll see. Yeah, it's Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, Ron Howard's daughter. Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, How the Grinch stole christmas they're remaking it with benedict cumberbatch as the grinch like a an human animation version? oh an animation yeah. i think it's like um Illumin illuminations illuminations okay like, well it's, like it's him you'll know i watch it yep. i watch i watch it him and uh, that's it that's what i it's have a good list yeah so that's the preview for 2018 so there's a lot to go for um look we love you listeners um you know we really hope you've enjoyed our episodes we're going to keep doing them uh so from tony the movie guy podcast would love to uh, wish you all guys a happy new year happy new year guys good night Thank you again for listening to another new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. Um, we want to remind you to follow us on all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Tony the Movie Guy. Also, uh, to please leave a rating and review on Apple iTunes. Um, that's extremely helpful. We always love it. And also, you can email us at any time at Tony the Movie Guy podcast at gmail.com and Lastly, we would very much so like to wish you a very, very happy 2018. I hope you have a very happy and safe new year, and we'll see you next year. Bye-bye.